You are the fox. As you know, uh, if you watch us with any regularity, parents already have plenty to worry about. Now there's something different for parents to fear. There are groups of people out there who are preying on your children. These are groups that uh, seek out kind of good kids and can turn them into ruthless hate mongers. And that's what one of our guests today said happened to her teenage son in a crime that made headlines and shocked the community. Last year, a 14-year-old girl was savagely beaten by a group of skinheads with a pool stick. Today, three teenagers are behind bars for that brutal beating, but the mother of one of the three says that her son was also a victim. She says he was a nice boy who was brainwashed by the skinheads. We're going to talk to this mom and her son later in an exclusive TV interview. But first, I think it's important that we get a sense of what the young skinheads are really about. I want you to meet Jason, Shane, Nicole, and Ron. They say they're all proud members of a skinhead group called the Aryan National Front. Skinheads, by the way, are the most violent group of white supremacists. They believe in Nazi doctrine, they believe in anti-Semitism, and they are also anti-gay. They say they hate anyone who isn't white and that violence is the only way to achieve racial purity. Shane's father, Mike, and Jason's mother, Donna, say they're very upset about their sons joining the skinhead group. But before we talk to the parents, Shane, let me um, ask you what the Aryan National Front stands for. Well, the Aryan National Front is a white separatist organization, and they have the uh, National Socialist Belief, which is our race is our nation, and our nation's everything, and that's what we should live and fight and die for. Nicole, your parents have no idea that you're a skinhead, and yet you're here on national television? Are you not worried that they would find out? Mm -mm. You are not worried that they yeah. would find out? Do you care if they find out? Mm -mm. No. Shane, you told our producers that if you were forced to make a choice, you would pick the skinheads over your own family. This must be very hard for a family to hear. Can you explain that for us? Well, my mother told me to make the decision. She said I could live in her house or, or go off with and, and, and be with them, so I left and be with them. My mother still, I live in my mother's house today. My mother still loves me. I still love my mother. We have, we have a, a great relationship. Okay. She doesn't but, agree with everything I believe, but she doesn't disagree with everything I believe either. So it would be the, the group over your family? Well, if it came to know my race over my family, because my family is just a few people, my race is everything. You also told our producers you feel Hitler was a brilliant man and follow his beliefs. Hello, Hitler. Hello, Hitler. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You also said you believe in violence to protect the race and, and you admit to shooting people. Is that correct? Well, uh, when, if it's necessary. It's necessary. Shane and Jason, how do your parents feel about you being a skinhead? Well, I'm sure my mom hates it. Okay. Okay. Let's ask them how they feel. Mike and Donna, come on out. Donna. I know you just found out a few days ago that your son Jason is a skinhead. How could he have kept that from you? Well, I would, he, the only thing that I would knew about was, you know, him fighting, the fighting that he'd had. And I would ask him some things, you know, would come up and I would ask him about it and he would deny it. How does it make you feel that he is a skinhead? It's terrifying. I mean, you know, he's on the road to destruction. You feel that way. Have you told him that? Mm -hmm. What does he say? Well, I haven't exactly said, you know, you're on the road to destruction. He was wanting, you know, for a while he was saying, well, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to move out and I'm going to be independent. But now he's letting someone tell him what to think. I'm not what letting to, anyone tell me what to think. What I think to wear. Come on. Come on. Who he can oh. like, who he can dislike, you know. Jason has said he worships the hell out of Hitler and looks at him as his father. I said I look at him as, as a father, not my father. 
as a father. Do you agree with that? Mom? No. I mean, Hitler was one of the worst people that's ever, you know, that's ever been here. Mike, how do you feel about your son Shane's involvement as a skinhead? I don't care for it. I don't like it. You don't like it? No. Have you talked to him? I didn't hear you. Have you talked to him about it? We've talked a little bit. He knows how I feel. Why are you worried about it? What worries you? I'm afraid he's either going to wind up getting in trouble, wind up in prison, or wind up dead. I don't, wish, I don't wish any of you to go through what the Jewish people and any other person who was a victim of the per person that you seemingly worship. The only thing that I want to set the record straight for is that the hand salute that you honor him with was short by one thing. Instead of a five-hand salute like you do, it, it was four fingers too much. It should have been like this for Hitler. Yeah. You're talking. responsible for the way that your son like when he was growing up did you have a lot of you know um talk in your house that might have made him that way negative talk in his house that might have made him that way donna can you hear her i can't really she hear. says do you when when he he was growing up when jason was growing up was there conversation in the house that may have made him feel this way? Do you feel at all responsible for the way your son has turned out? Is that what no, you're asking? No, I yeah. tried to bring him up to respect, you know, all races. I have friends from all different races, and I would, you know. Y'all made me this way. Y'all made all of us this way. Yeah. Sometimes when there's negative talk in a household, this is what comes out of it. Because what? you have to teach children when they're really little how to respect one another and love each other. You mm -hmm. teach that because when they're born, they don't know that. Yeah, well, okay. see, the way I was, you know, we taught him how to, you know, to respect the races. And but that now the leaders of the uh, the skinheads eventually are going to steal his soul and Shane's soul and all the other boys. They, they didn't steal my soul. Around. I chose to be. Well, they skinhead. will. I just oh, have a comment. Time. I just have a comment to make that um, I think it's really sad. You know, you're wasting your lives. Uh, life mm -hmm. could be such a beautiful thing, and we could learn something. From each and every one of us can learn from each other. And I heard you make a comment about we have to work together. And you're wasting your life on hate. I don't you, see you working for anything but hate. Working together. You're hating together. You're not working but together. Look here. You are hating together. Are you going to sacrifice your racial heritage? Are you not going to be able to identify with your own? Are you going to See, sacrifice that to get along I'm with everybody? I'm from the human race, and I'm not ah, sacrificing yeah. things. I'm human too. I'm human too. We'll, we'll talk it out, okay? I understand your anger. I would feel the same way, but we'll talk it it's out. An ignorant statement. Yes, it was. It was a very ignorant statement. <laughs> Just remain calm, okay? Uh, well, next, we're like going to meet a 16-year-old girl who's dating a boy who's in the KKK. Her parents are appalled, but he is going to try to make them and us understand why one should join the KKK. You don't want to miss this? We'll be right back. I think that would be a parent's nightmare. I mean, how would you feel if your child walked in one day and said, guess what, mom and dad, I've joined a racist skinhead group? They'd be proud. No. Uh, no. Uh, 
They Not me. They really didn't be in the local crack house. You like them to come home with a blue rag on their head smoking crack? <laughs> hey, how would you feel? How would you feel if your daughter come home and said, I'm pregnant, but it's my black man? Would you be proud? Would you be proud? Okay. Imagine how you'd feel if your daughter started dating a boy who was in a white supremacist group. I want you to meet 16-year-old Teresa, 18-year-old Casey, and his 24-year-old brother, the one that was just so verbal, Chad. Teresa's parents, John and Beth, were horrified to find out that their daughter's boyfriend, Casey, and his brother, Chad, are members of the KKK. Before we bring out mom and dad, let me ask, Teresa, you are not in the KKK. No. You are not. <clears throat> Why are you not in the KKK? Do you not believe what they believe in or what? I just, I'm not a hateful person. I don't, I don't believe Do that I think... should go out hating people. I mean, what they want to do. Okay. So? Why are you dating a boy who is in this group? Because he's not, he, he's not bad. I mean, no, just let We're me, loving people. let me talk. Right. You guys don't even give me a chance race. to talk. Let me We're talk. People. People. You can figure out what's really going okay, on Okay, go here. ahead. All right. You know how much we love Just be quiet. For, all right. Go ahead. And love. I love him. He's a great man to me. I mean, boy, whatever you want to call him, he's a guy, all right? A girl and guys go together, okay? I'm listening right. to well, you. I'm listening to you. Go okay, ahead. I'm sorry. Why are you dating him? Because I love him. Okay. Whatever he believes in, that's like his God. It's not, it, it's all Christ, Christian, all right? Whatever you want to. The Jews! The Jews got you all fooled! He, he believes. He can, the white race is the chosen people. It's in the Bible. We reign over everything. Everything great! Everything great is here! Listen, we have to listen to what other people say and we have to listen quietly. So let's talk. Let's talk in a normal tone of voice. Casey, you are proud to be a member of the KKK, okay? Tell us why this is a good organization. You can see it here. Our white race is slowly dying in front of our eyes and we are proud we are proud to stand up yeah, that's good that's we racism are, right now look at these hate faces look at these hate faces the reason i the reason i hate is because i gotta look at faces like that that look at me and you guys say that we are full of hate but as soon as we walked out that door what happened, what happened? all of you let me finish what i'm gonna say i never said i hate you i do not hate you i do not hate you I do not hate you. Let me talk to Teresa for a moment. You know your parents are upset that Casey is involved in the KKK. Does it bother you that your parents are upset? They ain't really, they're upset, I can see them, but that's just my dad protecting me. My, that's my dad. He's gonna do that for me. Okay. Casey, how do you feel about her parents not approving? That's, that's their choice. That's their choice. I think it's time we hear what Teresa's parents have to say. John and Beth, come on up. Can I um, get through here one way or the other to these people? Thank you. John and Beth, how do you feel about this? I don't like it, and the more I learn about it, the more, the more I, I don't it. like it. <laughs> how do you feel about your daughter's boyfriend? I'm asking you a very point-blank question. I like Casey. I like him. You like him. But I just don't like who he stands for. What he all. stands for. For what? The young man is all right, but what he stands for bothers I you. I wish that he would get away from it. Do you think there's a chance he will, parents? I want to ask like him to one thing. I would like to think there is. Well, go ahead, ask one him. Thing. Don't ask one me, thing. ask him. I've talked to you honestly, and you know I spoke to you from my heart, and it wasn't to put a show on for nobody. You know I love my daughter, yes. all right? Do anything in the world for and me. The one thing I wanted to ask you is, remember we talked about being a man, and when a man makes remember his own time? mind up on things, he doesn't let nobody else follow him? Anybody. I want to ask you his own mind up. He's going to class. See? Wait, excuse me. Let I told you I've never been able to talk to you. That's it. Casey, man, I'm telling you, bud, I'm asking you one thing. One thing. You're 18. You're a man. That's right. I want to ask you one thing. Oh, As a man, boy. just your choice, nobody else's, not none of these people's. Be a man, stand, get, up. stand up, get away from the clan. For one year, one year, for you, 
for just you, let Casey Brown stand out there and go to a Jewish temple. You know why? Because you could be a man and you could see what goes on there, right? And go to a church that has more black in it and just see what those people go on. Then at the end of that year, you make your decision up as a man, as a man, nobody else. If you have the right, you, have, you will have the right not to like anybody based on what he has found out. Not Be a man on and what, save your race for your children. See, teaching, teaching. He is a young man. He's got a right to think and hate Puerto Ricans. If he wants to hate Puerto Ricans, fine then. In the mind. In the mind. You, will, the, you guys up here will never... Never take over because I'm not about to take over. We just want a place to go where we can you be with our own kind. It ain't gonna happen, see, but it it's a dream though. world. It's all because over. Because see that poor Rican guy up there and that black guy over here? I will stand with them against uh, you. We are many, you are few. No, no. we are many, Together, you are few. We are many, and you are few. All right. Go ahead. I have a question. I actually have a question right. and a comment. If you're so secure with your white race, why do you feel that you need this hatred to protect it? Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's not hatred. If I'm my race, everything it's good against the law in this country. Be proud of my race. We get more jail yes, times. People hate us for it. In our schools, we're taught to be ashamed of our race because of slavery. I didn't bring the slaves over here. When I was in school, they taught me about your history, so. honey, not mine. It's going to take hatred to bring it back. That's, yeah, y'all. And you need to be a bigger person yeah. than that. And I'm going to recruit like, all I your little kids, I love you so much. Too. I'm going to come down there and stick my tongue straight I'll down your throat. I'm going to I'm going to We'll be right back. Part, uh, besides the hatred, the violence is also extremely upsetting. I want you to welcome a former guest uh, who used to be a very high-ranking member of the KKK and has left the KKK and now spends his time <laughs> trying to make people realize the danger that is in hate groups, which, by the way, is why we are doing this show. He has written a book called Boys in the Hoods, <laughs> One man's journey from hatred to love. Welcome, Reverend Johnny Lee Clary. Johnny Lee Clary, by the way, welcome back, was once an imperial wizard of the KKK and. <laughs> once uh, was. Once was, that's correct, and was a member for 17 years. 17 years. What do you think of what you have heard so far? And would you be kind enough to talk to Chad and Casey? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, it just goes to show how bad racism is in this country right now. And one of the audience members said that racism is a sickness. And the way to uh, combat that sickness is you don't want to hate a sick person. You want to help that sick person get better. Yeah. And, and that's what my job is all about now. And what I would say to you, Casey... Talk to now, Chad and talk to Ch Casey. Yeah, okay. Casey, you, uh, you've you been taught... Racism is taught. It's a learned response. You're not born with it. You have to be taught it. It was not taught. And, and you're, and, but I want to make a point here. Do you love Teresa? Yes, I do. Okay. And I believe Teresa cares for you. Did you know that Teresa is half Indian and half Mexican? She's Spanish. I mean, yeah. Spanish. Spanish. Different. Uh, well, the, 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 here's the thing, the very thing you talked about, racial, racial purity, 
but she happens to be something that, that the Klan and I believe the skinheads are against. What do y'all think of her being part Mexican and part Indian? She is Spanish. You're a very young man. You're, you're, you're young now. I'm a lot older than you. I've been where you was at at one time. And love, if you love a woman, you must respect a woman. That's right. And she came to me with her father, and she does not want you involved in this. Why can't you respect her wishes and leave it Amen. if you love her? Because that's my choice. I love her, so she should love me for what I am. She shouldn't love you when you violate someone else's rights, and that's what you're doing when you preach hatred tell and me, violate other people's rights. Tell me, when time have I violated someone else's rights? It's really sad, because if you don't turn your life around, you're going to make some sorry mistakes, and you got a chance you could turn your life around and have a future with her. But this is... I want to say something to the parents. May I say something to them? Surely. This is what's wrong with today's society. Parents need to take a stand in their home okay. and take a thorn over their children. She is not 18 years old yet, and I want to ask you guys if, if, he, if he's, he's given a choice. If he will not uh, honor her wishes and come out of this, then I would ask you guys to take authority in your home until she turns 18. When she turns 18, she can do what she wants to. But until she turns 18, take authority All right. and don't allow this type of hate to come into your home. I made her promise. Allow me to get another opinion. I would like to introduce to you a gentleman I hold in extremely high esteem. His name is Roy Innes, and he is National Chairman of the Congress of Racial Equality. Roy, come on. That's right. Yeah, you did. And you wonder why we do. And if you don't calm down, he's liable to use it against you. if they want to. All of you sit down. I would like, sir, some healing. Some healing. Don't sit down against me. Okay? Sally. I've asked a favor. I've asked Roy to do some healing, okay? Let's just listen. I saw in the monitor that these guys have grown from something like 400 up to about 4,000. Well, unfortunately, there was 200,000 sympathizers. Let's give them 10,000. Yes. Let's give them that. Be generous. No, it takes one. We have 200, <laughs> we have 250 million, 260 million Americans. And I have seen a cross-section of America here today. We have the answer to these guys. Now, let me tell you, what happened in Germany could not have happened if the German people had reacted like your audience. That's right. Huh? That's absolutely right. That's and right. The I German people had pride. If they had reacted, the people in your, your listening audience, your viewing audience, <laughs> if their reflection of the audience here, of the gentleman, the father, who spoke for his daughter and spoke so well, that's America. That's the positive. That's the healing. We'd be crazy to react to these guys. Let them stand. Yes. yes. That's right. However, it's very important to put a spotlight on it. Yes. Because if yes. you did, it, we didn't have television they exposed in themselves. 1938 exactly. Germany. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. If the German people could have seen the if Nazis, seen the way we have seen these guys, see. yes. what happened there and to the world it makes would the not difference. have happened. Exactly. That's, that's, why we, that's why we have to take right. a stand as one race, the human race, and like come to, together. Uh, and if we can take a stand, we can overcome hatred. What? Oh. Well, let me ask but you, I what is the fascination of, of the Ku Klux Klan? What is the fascination that they have for it? Well, they White kids are grown up. They don't have anything to look, look up to. 
You see, the people that would join a group like the Klan, they come from dysfunctional homes. You know, look at the way that they're acting. It's sad that they have to do this to get attention from people because they needed attention. Well, look at the audience yelling at us. Okay. And, 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 and the thing about it is, is you know, they're, they're so misguided and, and they're looking to belong. They want attention. They want to feel loved and wanted and needed. And when they don't get it at home, they got to shave their heads and dress like this and come out and call people names. Roy, I want Johnny and Roy now to talk to a woman. This is a woman whose teenage son is in jail because he joined a skinhead group and was part of a brutal beating, I think this happened over in Jersey, I'm sure you know about it, of a 14-year-old girl whom the papers said wanted to leave the skinheads. This mom says her son is <coughs> a good kid who was a victim of them. We're gonna find out what she means next. The thread that is running through what we're doing today, besides being in the light of things that have been in the news, also has been parents and their attitude. We've been talking to parents who say they're brokenhearted because the kids have joined violent skinhead groups. And by the way, the skinheads themselves, if one of their tenants is violence, or in one case is dating a member, young member of the KKK. Sometimes being involved in a skinhead group leads to violence and danger. And my next guests say they know about that too well. Back to the parents. Last year, a community was shocked when a 14-year-old girl was beaten by a group of skinheads. Three teenagers were sent to jail for that crime, and the mother of one of them is here today to talk about what her family has been through at the hands of the skinhead movement. Please meet Michelle. Next to Michelle, by the way, to make her feel more comfortable, is her attorney, Marion Costanza, who is joining her for support. This is Michelle's first television appearance. Michelle says her son's life was ruined after he got involved with the skinhead group. Now her son Stephen is joining us by telephone from jail, but first, Michelle, how did you find out that your son was involved in a skinhead group? Okay. First of all, my son was not really um, a member of any group, okay? He was a very vulnerable, <coughs> used teenager who was full of a lot of anger, and the anger was directed at himself. He was angry at himself. He was angry at me. He had a lot of problems at school. And this group was allowed. This group took my son and brainwashed him and made him feel important, <coughs> like he belonged and he was accepted, OK? My son doesn't now, nor did he ever, <coughs> hate anybody because of their skin or religion or any for any reason. These people just took him and brainwashed him and made him feel important, okay? He was more like a show skinhead. He wore the clothes, he shaved his head. But never once did I ever hear him tell anybody that I hate you because you're black or you I- may not have understood the <laughs> ramifications of the group. Stephen, are you with us? Yes. Tell us from your point of view. I heard what Mother had to say, but what made you get involved with the skinheads in the first place? Well, you know, my mother's pretty much right, you know. She it's was right, okay. Okay, it's, it, it, it's, the, it's the acceptance <laughs> that they see. Uh, you know, you belong to something. You, you think you're going to change something. You're going to be a part of a big thing, which... You're, you're just involved in a big lie, and you're basically lying to yourself, I think. Stephen, what about the night of the beating? Can you really quickly tell us what happened? I hate to ask you to make it short, but I have to. All right, well, I hear a lot of people saying that the skinheads beat up a girl. <coughs> right. That was, that's not what it was. It wasn't every skinhead jumped on a little girl. I myself would have never participated in something like that, on jumping on a little girl, okay? Uh, Pretty much what it was, it was a relation, it was a love triangle that went bad. 
Sally, we tried to tell Stephen many times that these people were very violent, okay? And Stephen didn't want to hear that from us. He would say, they're not violent, Mom. They just want to be left alone. Well, now that night, thank God that night happened, okay? Because <coughs> these people don't have my child. I have my child. <laughs> and I love him very much. And I'm not ashamed to say he's my son. I know you are afraid for your son. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that people will see him for what's written in the newspaper and not see him for what he is. And what he is is a warm, loving child who went in the wrong direction. A so. He is not a murderer. I want you to, in, I would like to introduce to you now a woman who says she knows what uh, Michelle is going through. This is Sandy. Two years ago, Sandy, has it been two years? My goodness. Two years, Sandy wrote us a letter that really touched our hearts. Her son, Adam, was a skinhead. Her son is now serving 25-year sentence for killing a homeless black man in cold blood. Sandy and her son joined us to share the pain. Please take a look at this. What do you remember about the murder? I just remember we were going out to beat people up, and I was Everyone ran off, and I saw a fire, and it, there was a, hu a, a form huddled there. He just popped up, and he had a weapon in his hand. And I, I said, Merry Christmas. Next thing I know, I just started beating him, and I couldn't stop. You know, I just beat him, and beat him, and beat him. And, and you know, next thing my friend said, hey, come on, let's get out of here, man. You know, they had they'd come back to the car. And I just couldn't, I, was, I felt high, you know. I, felt, I was like, I couldn't believe I just killed somebody. I knew he was dead. You knew? How did you know he was dead? He had a, he had his brains coming out of his head. But you couldn't, Adam, was there were no way that you could stop yourself from beating up this man? I don't know. I'm sure it's something that you must have thought about. Anyhow. It just. Yes, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It didn't, I don't know. It just didn't cross my mind. It just happened. Just keep you know? doing it. And as you said, there was a feeling when you came back that you had killed somebody. Did that feel good? At the time, yeah. Just to tell you where these things go. Sandy was very afraid that her 16-year-old daughter, Aaron, who also joined us that day, was heading down the same path as her brother. Take a look. Adam, do you want to say something to Aaron? Well, first. Is it true? I mean, are you hanging out with skinheads, Aaron? I only have a couple of friends, but I'm in no way in that direction. I mean, I've seen what it's done to you, and it's a really destructive path to go on, and I'm not going that way. Well, and remember. I've... Go ahead. No, well, just remember the people that I hung out with, you seen how they acted, you know. You don't want to hang out with them. I know. Nicole and Teresa, if I can't save the world, maybe I can save the women. We're listening. Sandy, it's nice to have you back with us. What's happened since the show? Did Aaron take Adam's advice and stay away from the skinheads? Yes, she did. She uh, was lying on the show somewhat. and. Uh, I you mean she was more involved than she'd let us know. Yes, she was. And uh, by being on the show, it, uh, it turned her around. She got out of it. She was... Uh, Good. Week after this show, we took Ron, Shane, Nicole, Casey, and Chad to the Museum of Tolerance. Did it turn them around? Stay tuned to find out. say to Michelle to help her through this difficult time? I know your son is in for 25 years and hers is in for what? Three, he has three year sentence. So there is a, yeah, as you know, um, the, the grieving process that you go through, there's a sense of loss that your son is going through. It's a very tough time for him. Uh, he, um, some, some go through the stages of, of of death, like at first denial, 
then uh, anger, then depression, and then acceptance. That's uh, typically what they go through if there is a murder involved. He's going through some of those right now. There is a loss in his life, maybe a loss of self-respect, a loss of, of, of uh, his identity that he has to gain back, and he's now aware of that. Right. Well, you know, Stephen's been in therapy, and he had been in therapy since February, prior to February. Actually, he started to go back to therapy right after the That's November a very, incident. very, very important thing. And um, when he was sentenced in October, his therapist, um, his psychologist, Dr. Fink, told me that we've made ex very good progress because my no son now feels remorse, okay? He could never feel remorse before because he was just so full of anger, okay? And I can see in this young man's eyes down here, he don't want to be in involved with these people, okay? Let me tell you something. I have been told as I walk around quietly that you do not, now just listen to me, that you do not want to be with this group. It, does anyone agree with that? Yeah. I'm just telling you that. I'm just telling you what they think. And let, let's, and this is for not only the parents, but for all America. If we want to help someone, if we want to overcome hate, let's don't react with hate. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all wrongs. The best way to overcome an enemy is to make a friend out of him. And I'll offer you my friendship. If you want out, I'll help you get out. I ain't getting out. I'm in for life. I took that choice when I signed that paper and when I sat down and took the oath that I would stay for life. So that's more important to you than this young lady? No, it's not more important. Do you love it but more that's than something. It's his choice. Then why won't he you respect out, her wishes and leave? I'm not do you want me to leave, Teresa? Do you want me to leave? The what am I going to do, beat up Wait. my brother? Do you want him to leave? Do you want him to leave? Shh. It's her choice. Do you want him to leave? I would like him to leave, but that is his choice. Oh. Okay. What are we seeing here, Roy? This young man made a big step. He committed here in front of all of us to come with me and John and Lee to see the Holocaust Museum. That's I'm going right. to hold him to his commitment, and that's a big step in the right direction. I'll pay the way. Okay. My comment is, a statement was made that God created the races that they would be separate. God did not create the ra races that they would be separate. He created them so that he could display his glory and show how beautiful that we all could be. That's first. Two, it is not okay to hate anyone, okay? It is not okay to hate Puerto Ricans. It's not okay to help blacks. It's not okay to hate black whites. Three, you will not get into heaven hating anyone. I'll be proud of who I am, though. Okay? Roy, do you know that I'm not going to Roy's organization are you works God? towards... Are you God? How, How do you, do you know? know what he thinks? Oh, no. All right, all right, all right. All right. Hello. Roy's organization works toward bringing the races together in harmony and understanding. And I've just said to... Why is Africa? Why is there United States? And why is there Jerusalem? And all these other different places. I've just, then why wait, wait, guys, one, I just one. said to Roy's son, I think we're going to go to why go visit him different? in boot camp. So that's something for us to look forward to. What have we seen here today, Roy? You will find out the truth when the time comes. We've seen a lot of anger and frustration. And some very young people, they, a lot of ignorance, a lot of stupidity. But I don't believe it is so deep that it can be changed. I saw it. Change. John and Lee changed. Changed. It can be done. This is a society that is better off than Germany in the 30s. And we can jump in it now. Things like the core boot camp. You know, in the old days, you could go into the army. 
and the army changed a lot of angry young a men. A lot. Right? We cut back in the army. I think it was a big mistake. I do too. The army did a lot besides fighting. We're one of they the few countries where you don't people. have to do your service. And that's why I created an army start boot camp, the same kind of language as the army, a boot camp. Intense working with young people to get that anger out, get the honest display of that anger and let them see Are it. they all colors? All colors. Okay. You know, we want to reach out to this young man, to his brother. We want to reach out to young black men. I want to have them both together in the boot camp. We will go. And these guys are, they are courageous enough to agree in the public in front of you, Sally, to come to the core boot camp and to come with me to the Holocaust Museum. That's, okay. that's why, see, they, that's why. Hey, here's God, what, I what can't say, go to your museum. That's why, that. because. You'll come with me. I'd love to go. The boot okay. camp, the we're boot, on. The boot camp the museum. Or only in the summer. The, the, Amy will go with you next week. How many of our skinheads will volunteer to go? One, two, three, four. Okay, let's see what happens. Next, will the Museum of Tolerance change the skinheads? Stay with us. You are the fire. You're off my stage. We took the skinheads to the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. I wouldn't want people thinking I'm prejudiced. 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 Racist. 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 The museum is designed to educate people about racism and the Holocaust. But could anybody get through to the skinheads and change how they feel? Show me the proof. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. You see white people going in stores and looting? You see white people act like this in our society? Burning their own houses and, and raiding their own stores, robbing each other like that? That's hate. It's a very important area of the museum because it asks the question who is responsible? The racial awareness world. Teenagers in America, wasted youth. First of all, I think you guys are very brave. I really do. I mean, <laughs> I know what boot camps are like, and I, for you to be able to tolerate this would be pretty interesting. I love doing this show because it's to be continued. What we're going to do is we're going to the museum, and we're going to go to boot camp, and we're going to see what happens. I know you have a speech in Washington that you're going to be giving, so I'm putting that in the mix. Uh, what can I tell you? Thank you for being with us. Next time, you'll see what's going on with these guys. Bye. <laughs> You are the fuck!